I think that moral issues... Television evangelist Jimmy Swaggart made a tearful confession before his congregation on February 21st, 1988, of unspecified sin. I have sinned against you, my Lord. He stepped down from his pulpit. It was reported that Swaggart had paid a New Orleans prostitute to pose in the nude. Swaggart had been accused of setting off the sex scandal, which led to the defrocking of televangelist rival Jim Baker. Baker and a top aide were indicted on 24 counts of fraud and conspiracy. Baker had resigned his ministry after admitting to a sexual encounter with a church secretary. I want to get back to preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and loving and caring for people. Thank you for being here. Bye-bye. Jimmy Swagger's scandal came complete with prostitution and a very tearful on-camera confession. To my fellow television ministers and evangelists, please forgive me for sinning against you. I have sinned against you, my Lord. And I would ask that your precious blood would wash and cleanse every stain. Background here is that Jimmy Swaggart had been going after other televangelists like Jim Baker for marital infidelity for years. When the tables were turned in 1988, he was forced to admit that he himself had um, availed himself of the services of a prostitute. So he confessed with many tears, as you saw. He stepped down from his ministry for three months. Then, despite having been defrocked by the Assemblies of God, he went back as an ordained minister of his own Jimmy Swaggart Ministries. Then, three years later, he was busted with another prostitute in his car, at which point he told his congregation that his proclivities were, and I quote, none of your business. So Jimmy Swaggart, the hooker, cry and repent about the hooker, hooker again guy. Not to be confused with Jim Baker, the secretary stripping fraud prison guy. What happens when people that apparently are good Christians end up doing things that indicates they're not good Christians at all, but... And, and then we've got whole denominations that are willing to violate the scriptures, like the Assemblies of God, and rehabilitate preachers. You can't be rehabilitated. You, you, the, one of the requirements of being an elder is that you are, be of good reputation even in the community. Not just in the church, in the community. So if you've got a reputation as an adulterer, a whoremonger, uh, uh, no. <laughs> and that's... You know, so like in talking about Jimmy Swigert in particular there, I mean, we get caught repeatedly. And then you, the first time you repent, oh, God. And the second time you get caught with a prostitute by the state patrol, I believe it was, or the state police down there. It's like, what's this woman here? We, we know who this is. What's she doing in your car, Jimmy? Oh, I don't know. What's that pornography in your car, Jimmy? I don't know. It just appeared there. It must have been a demon. You just put it there right now, just as you walked up. This isn't actually a, a, who you think it is. This is actually a demon impersonating her. Something like that, you know. Uh, he didn't actually use that excuse, but it was like, I don't know. Huh. I just picked your sister. You're trying to get felt sorry for her. I can't remember exactly what the excuse was. It's like, Really? I think the police have probably heard that excuse many, many times. And then, so the second time when he, when Swagger got caught, instead of going before his church and doing the tears thing, this time he says, none of your business. Okay. So why does anybody attend Jimmy Swagger's church? Because sheep are incredibly stupid. Uh, actually, the people that go to places like that, and there's multiple large churches around, mega churches around this country. Jimmy Swaggart's not a mega church anymore; it just has a mega building. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I was in that building one time. I went away from there very uh, unimpressed by Swaggart. Oh yeah, I got the idea; he's not real. And it proved out. <laughs> you just look around and say, he's got armed guards. He, he he doesn't show up for his camp meeting until it's his time to speak. And he pulls up and is, I think it was a Lincoln. And then as soon as he's done talking, he disappears. 
Okay, so yeah, it's just she just it was in it for the money, apparently. Islam allows poor wives. He just corrected me, said up to four. I said, well, <clears throat> Mr. D. Dot, Christianity only allows us one, so I had to get the best on the first shot. So he said, but you see, Christianity allows us only one, and I have to choose the best. <laughs> get the tape, get the tape. He said, I have to choose the best. And you know, the best was not good enough. Look, look, this, all these tele-evangelists, all, one by one, they're all falling. Reverend Mar, 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 Marvin Gorman, an evangelist, you know, tele-evangelist, he appears on television, tantalizing millions. He was caught with a prostitute. Jim Becker, Jim Becker, with Jessica Hans, another prostitute. Jimmy Swaggart, average of two trips to the prostitute for his satisfaction. I said, you laugh at us, you are a fool. I said, the laugh is on you. <laughs> you Americans, you have a problem. You British, you have a problem. You French, you have a problem. You Germans, you have a problem. And to these, there are no solutions in your book. No solution. Islam gives you an answer to your problem.